next slide is going to be an intro. So let me introduce you for just a second. I've known Nick Manfredi for a long time. I think I was invited by third party to one of his investment club meetings many, many years ago. Absolutely impressed him. I kind of gave him the introduction earlier. I, I, Nick and I, I think, generally are the same person when it comes to how I, we're just constantly watching the market, constantly trying to come up with where do we go, how do we adjust our plan. Um, we've got a lot of history together. We've seen some good and some bad and, and, and made the bad into good and, and tried to keep the bad or the good as good as possible. I don't know if I can get my good, words mixed bad, up. So, good, so bad. Nick has a presentation. I'm actually going to give the clicker to you because he might have a little bit different idea of what's going on. So I'm, this is your presentation. I'm going to let you run it. I'm going to go sit over here. I'm going to let you riff. And, um, and then Nick is also going to come back and join our panel at the end. I'm sure many of you will have some questions or some comments about what he's going to present. Um, and we'll be able to get to those. Um, you got to stick around, though. We'll be able to get to those when we get to the panel at the very end, and we'll go as long as we need. Nick, take it away, buddy. Uh, thanks, Lance. Uh, well, with all that good news, you guys are making the same amount of money that you made in last year, right? No, maybe not. I, I, I don't, it didn't seem that way sometimes. I'm not trying to be a negative guy. The information that I'm going to go ahead and present isn't my opinion. I'm not going to provide any opinions. It's just data. And I'm going to look back 45 years, and I'm just going to look at the market cycles and the data. So um, I look at it like waves. California kind of goes up, kind of goes down. The great thing about California and real estate is it goes up. And then it goes down, and you can make money because of those ways. It was just, if it was just amortization, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to make a lot of the money that we do in real estate if we buy at the right time. Um, in 2007, I went ahead and, I'm sorry, 2005, I was selling all my, price, all my properties because I anticipated the market was going to top out. Um, there was good information out there that affordability, we, we were reaching an affordability crisis, and so... I uh, sold all my properties in California, and I moved them to Texas to hold them until 2009 when the market would sort of bottom out. And sure enough, that's exactly what had happened based on what the market cycles had told us from the repeated patterns. So I'm not a guy who deals with stocks. I'm not a guy who goes ahead and deals with uh, you know bonds and so forth. I'm in Southern California real estate. I'm in California real estate. So uh, that's where I focus my attention and my, my interest. So I'm going to start with the very last slide that I'll show at the end, but to kind of illustrate where the data suggests we're going. This is not my opinion. I have zero opinions in this. So uh, it's kind of scary. There's some, some ugly numbers here, but these are two different comps that I have here. Just like a house, when you look at a property, there's, there's maybe in a half mile radius in a really bad time, there might be only two properties that uh, you have to go through. One's low, one's high. You say, if, you're, if this is a comparable sale, you pick the one in the middle. These are two ways to evaluate the bottom of the market uh, in, in the past, over the past, since 1977. Whoa, I didn't press that. There we go. The first one uh, that I'll discuss in a moment is the percentage of the income uh, given a certain interest rate and what ultimately the, the, at the trough of the market, at the very bottom of the market, Take markets like 1983, ballpark in 1983. Take uh, 1996, 2009. Those are the troughs of the market, the very bottom, the coolest times. That we, some people might call them crashes. Well, if I average all of those out, we end up with today's median household income, $451,000. That's ugly as heck. I don't like that. I don't want it to go there. But if you go ahead and account for inflation, that's where the last three cycles averaging them out, that's where it ultimately went. The other comp in evaluating where prices could go at the bottom of the market is a percent, I should say, a multiple of income. For instance, if everybody, I should say, if the median household income in the state of California was $100,000 and we had a multiple of five averaged across the past three or four troughs, well, there would be a $500,000 purchase price. If we had a multiple of six, and the median household income, which is a really stable statistic, if the multiple was six on average at those, at those troughs, we'd have a $600,000 purchase price. But if I average all those troughs, we end up with a 4.67 multiple, and today's median household income is $83,000 in the state of California. So those are two comps. If I just average those, twos out, those two out, because I don't just like one, might want to use a couple of comparables to find out where the trough might be. 
you end up with $419,000. That's not my, that's not what I want to happen. That's what the data said, that's what the cycles have said. So if I came up to you and said, this isn't gonna happen this time, absolutely not gonna happen. Well then my arguments as to why it's not going to happen have to be stronger than what the data suggests in previous cycles and, and so far I haven't been, and I've been asking people who know a lot more than I do and are, are you know, what are the reasons that it won't? And sometimes it doesn't really make, they're, they're not really strong arguments as to why it wouldn't occur. So I need to make, because I want, need to know what I need to do with my family's money and, and what I plan to do with that cash and where I plan to keep it for extended period of time. And so far those arguments haven't really been too persuasive in saying, hold on to stuff. I'm holding on to my rentals that I have free and clear, but the stuff that I wasn't going to be free and clear, I don't want to keep. Now, this is the most beautiful slide in, in that I've ever seen for real estate, and it happens to be California's uh, percentage of people who can afford a median-priced property. So if the ones in red, if you can see them, they may just be darker, are the, tr the hottest times in the market, okay? So they would be red. The rest of them are blue. If it's in blue, it's a little cooler time, but these are the tops of the market. So if we go ahead and see 1980, 1989, if you can make that out. The other one was, if you remember, is 2006, and then we just reached it again in 2022. All of those years, if you notice, is it just a coinky dink that we get to 17% affordability? That is 17% of the population can afford a median priced property. We hit it again in 1989, we hit it again in 2007, and we just hit it again. Heck, we only got down to 13% when people could lie to get the loan that they wanted in 2007. So it's a pretty stable number as to when it's a good time to sell your property, when we're approaching 17%. By the same token, if you can see that median affordability number, it's 30%. I just took all the years. I divided by those years, the, the averages, and came up with 30% affordability. I'm gonna, for my brain, as, an, as a real estate investor that plans on being around for at least another five years or so, um, looking at a median household income, you can see how it kind of, I'm sorry, a median affordability number. You see how when we drop all the way to 17, we end up correcting back. We go to 17, we correct back, and the swings are actually getting worse, are getting larger. I think it's probably because of Prop 13, but as, as soon as we escape that trend line, regression towards the mean kind of brings us back to the affordability mean. So I'm, that, that data is helpful in kind of finding out when, it, when it's time to sell and when it's time to buy. Could be wrong. But then if I'm going to argue that this, is, this isn't going to happen again, it's not going to repeat itself, i got to come up with some good information as to why it's not going to repeat itself. So, well, that has everything all at once, doesn't it? Well, there's those two methods. We're going to really focus so that we understand how we get there. Um, with We're going to focus on specifically uh, the $83,000 median household income. I reasoned that if my, my logic was it still is, if I take... California's median household income of $83,000. The vast majority of Californians, they, they earn as a household plus or minus 20 grand of $83,000. As Chris mentioned earlier, I don't anticipate that there's gonna be a whole lot of bump up buyers. So most of the buyers are gonna fit real closely into that plus or minus 20 grand of that 83,000 bucks. Well, if I take a percentage of that, just like lenders do, and I take the prevailing interest rate, we should be able to get to a ballpark in it where people are gonna be able to afford uh, a property in the state of California. I don't know if, we'll, we'll cover it in a second, but you know how much you needed to make in the state of California in order to buy a median, household, uh, median priced property in 2022? 200,000 bucks. So that's, not, that's out of whack. We definitely escaped you know, maximum velocity, so to speak. Uh, and so it doesn't seem rational that that isn't going to have to come down and potentially come down pretty far. So we end up with that number being a $451,000 purchase price just by using those same statistics. 
if I thought, this is, I just got to think about individuals. If all of you were individuals looking to buy a house, and I told you, now is, you, you ready to buy a house? Let's all talk. Let's go out, th out there and look at properties. What I would have to kind of sell to them is you can most likely, if you look at a $600,000 house here in Riverside County, it's going to cost you ballparking it after principal, interest, taxes, and insurance, 5000 bucks a month. But you can rent it for 2800 bucks a month. This is a tough sell. You know, I guarantee you, if all of you were going to go ahead and do some investigating before you made the decision that day, you go on YouTube. And what, you would, what would you see? You'd see these people on YouTube with faces like this. And then a red arrow that goes down, and it diminishes their confidence level as to whether or not they want to do it, and it impacts them. Chris talked about the stories that we tell each other. We're not getting as, we get a lot of our stories now right from the internet, and people are a little concerned, but those are natural progressions in the first place. We inflated so high that only 17% of the people could afford to, to buy a property. Never ha have we been able to stop at 22%. We, we zoomed right past that. So I need to have a very strong reason, a very strong argument to say, no, this time we're going to stop when only 20% of the people can afford to purchase a median priced property. <sighs> that's that's a, that rationally, and I'm, as an investor, I'm practical. I'm not talking about all these economics and I'm not talking about what's happening with shipping and what's happening with Amazon. I'm talking about what Californians can, can afford to purchase right here, right now, and then how that affects their mind. So this is, if I'm going in past cycles, if I look at the payment as a percentage of, percentage of median income, the blue lines are 1983, those are, the, those are the trough years, 1983, 1996, and 2009. What lenders were willing to lend and buyers were willing to spend on shelter at the bottom of those markets was 51% in 83, 35% in 2009, I'm sorry, in 1996, and 29% in 2009. If I average those out, we end up with a 38%. I'm just taking averages. I'm never gonna hit it dead on. It's not, in any, it's not my intention, but I would like to know maybe where things might go. And like a comparable sale, I can say, ah, maybe it'll end up in there. there. There'd have to be a really strong reason. And even this number, 51% was whenever individuals were more likely in that, in that market cycle to go ahead and assume a mortgage subject to. And people could sell the property with the, with the financing intact. When we had the larger swings like we saw in... Uh, back in 19, from 1990, I should say, 2006 and 2022, you see that the median household income, if you were gonna buy a median priced property in the state of California, 68% of your income was going towards your principal interest taxes and insurance. And we, we zoomed past that in 2022, 75%, that's not reasonable. It's just not reasonable. And once the market starts to turn, turning people's minds positive, it has to be a no, in my opinion, it has to be a no-brainer for them to make that purchase decision because it's a little scary. And you're gonna have a lot of first-time home buyers doing that too, making that decision. At the current rate of decline, because with the stuff that we, that I love Chris Thornburg, loved him to death, knew him since 2006, but you wouldn't have thought that prices have declined, but the median house, the median priced property in the state of California is seven hundred and fifty-one thousand dollars. Seven months ago, it was nine hundred. So you wouldn't think that that was that was the case. And and so the question is, how do you tell people whenever you say last month it was? I'm sorry, six months ago, the property was worth fifteen thousand, or we'll say one hundred fifty thousand dollars more. Divide it by six or seven, and you end up getting a monthly decline that's pretty significant. It's pretty difficult to sell that. And pr certainly for me, it's you're not going to convince me to go ahead and buy it at retail and hope that it's going to go up. Two minutes, Nick. Okay. So uh, let's see. This is the other comp of look. Uh, I should say, if we take four hundred fifty-one thousand dollars at six percent. 
we end up with that $451,000 purchase price. If interest rates go, or stay low at 4%, obviously it would be higher based on previous cycles in the past, the last four. If we have an 8% interest rate, well then we end up at 366. But that's a fairly easy way of calculating that is given California's past, where it might be, if I'm going to make an investment decision, where it might, where it might go and, and might provide me with some intuition as to whether or not I should be very active right now, moderately active or highly active. That's it. No, that's not it. Let, oh, did you guys plug that in? Well, oh, yeah, okay. Well, that, there's a, that, no, that. you're cool. I think when we switched over our thing, you guys might not have plugged in the audio. I was gonna play a, a video yep. of Chris, maybe we still will if those guys can queue it up, of Chris Thornburg, who quite honestly, for those of you who are like, whoa, what's going on? What is Nick saying? <laughs> and um, um, Quite honestly, and you might have left Chris Thornburg saying, wow, that sounded like a pretty damn good forecast. I mean, that sounded pretty good in a recession. Um, can you guys get that video to play? The, the one that's the now, next. Real estate itself, I, look, if you look at affordability, real estate's still affordable once you account for interest rates. But if interest rates get to 7%, well, housing is no longer affordable. You guys get that? So that was Chris last year at last year's forecast where interest rates were not 7%. And, and again, if you missed the, the, the punchline, real estate's affordable. But if interest rates get to 7%, they're no longer affordable. But it wouldn't have mattered. We would have, according to the, the past cycles, we would have gotten to 17% if interest rates even remained the same. We would have inflated to 17%, and then it yep. just would have been unaffordable. But interest okay. rates might have So this is the deal. We're going to bring Nick back. He's going to be on the panel when we close this thing out. I'm sure you guys have more. Let me get, thank you, my friend. I love you. Um, clicker.